So I shear once a year. And so that means there's like a whole year just in growing the material. And then there's a whole year in using the material. And so there's all of these kind of secret layers of story that end up embedded in the cloth. Like little tragedies, you know, like what lambs died that year, what was hard, whatever it happens to be, like all of that is held in the fiber. So it's like writing all these tiny little stories. Early on in my weaving, I had come to Penland and immediately fell really in love with these mountains. I had done some farming and homesteading on land that didn't belong to me, and there was always the understanding of like, oh, but eventually all the work I've done here, I'm gonna have to leave. I was really wanting to find a place where the work I put in would stay with me. I did production work for a long time, and working as a production weaver, I really was just a machine at the loom. So basically making the same thing over and over again. And it's not even necessarily like I got burnt out, although maybe I did. Part of why I stopped production was realizing that so much of what I loved the most was what took the most time. And that's what I was cutting out of the work in order to make it more affordable. So over the past couple of years, I've become less and less efficient. I've just been thinking a lot about like the slowness and care that can go into every step of something. Right out of college, I lived at a Tibetan Buddhist monastery for two years. So like mindfulness and embodiment have always been really important to me. And actually my background is as a performance artist and contemporary dancer. And a lot of my work was just slow, like nothing more, <laughs> it was just slow. Actually probably because I have a lot of fire and I can be really big, what feels most compelling to me is being able to take that and really like sit in the container of myself. I feel like when I started my business, it was like very much the next step in a tradition of colonial American weaving. And why like the work of Francis Goodrich and people like Lucy Morgan who started Penland was so important to me was being able to see like directly what was happening here a hundred years ago. And I wanna feel like I'm directly connected to what came before as opposed to like living in the world of escapism that we're so profoundly presented with on a, every moment to moment basis of how to escape, you know? I don't really want to escape. My sheep are so essential to me. They know what's happening. Hi. They like help me live my life in the way that I want to live it. They help me get outside every day. We move them across not just my land, but a bunch of the neighbor's land how they benefit the pasture, it's incredible. And so having the sheep as a part of the process doesn't just mean that I'm extracting resources from the world around me in order to create some sort of product. There's actually like a reciprocal relationship between me and the sheep and the land, and we're all connected through that. That then makes the work and my life completely integrated. Sometimes I'll dye the wool before it's spun. Often I'm dyeing the wool after it's spun. There's sumac and iron just from rusty nails and weld, which is just a little plant that I grow and indigo. Something that I've like spent a lot of time giving myself permission to do is like what part of my brain wants to call sloppy, you know? But actually I think that there's like so much heart when something isn't perfect.
in my early 20s was the first time I sat down at a loom and it was like a complete watershed moment of homecoming, of like ineffable rightness. So you have just a bunch of loose thread gets wound in a really organized fashion onto the back beam. And so the thread slowly comes off of the back beam, back through the heddles, back through the reed, and that's where you start to make the cloth. It's such a sophisticatedly simple technology. It's so beautiful. I throw the shuttle, close the shed, beat the beater to pack down the threads, and then change the shed, open her up, throw the shuttle. So depending on what shafts are raised or lowered, that is what creates the language of the pattern. It's completely magical to me. What I am interested in and the way that I'm interested in living is with a rooted understanding of what contributes to my own survival and I have a reciprocal relationship with the world around me. So everything that's dying to give me life, I'm also offering back to it by putting in the work to make it all happen. I mean, I'm not like a purist. I'm not subsistence oriented. If the deer come and eat all of my corn, which they did last year, I have 18 kernels <laughs> to replant. Um, then I can go to the store and buy corn. I'm not looking to like create superficial struggles for myself. But the more that I can depend on the system less and less and depend on me and my neighbors and like what is directly contributing to my life more and more, that's very invigorating and intriguing to me. Because it's not really about the cloth for me. It's more about the living.